Hello, welcome to Lost in Movies. I'm Alec Kerr, the film critic for the Conway Daily Sun, and I'm joined by my my co-host, Jason yes, Stevens. Yes, how are you? I'm doing good. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm Jay from Smoking Jay's Wicked Barbecue. Who is kind enough to sponsor yes, this. Absolutely, it's our pleasure. Um, and you're up and going now. Yeah, we are up and going. Our season is rocking and rolling. You can find us at the Saco River Brewing Company right now today from 4 to 8 if you want to hop down. Or uh, next weekend we'll be in Bridgeton. Look us up on Facebook. Our schedule changes weekly, but we're always posting where, where you can find us. So come on down and grab and some And you barbecue. posted something about axe throwing? Oh, yeah. Last night was awesome. They had a... Um, a banjo player, a single banjo player band with axe throwing and barbecue. So it was very medieval feeling. So, All right. You know, it was it was a pretty cool vibe there last night. All right. Yeah, very, cool, cool. Very fun. So come on down and check us out. Excellent. So uh, if, if you haven't guessed by the visuals, uh, we're talking about Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yes. And yep. this is the conclusion to James Gunn's trilogy of Gardens of the Galaxy movies. And uh, this was uh, the, a heck of a movie. Uh, the best. Yeah. I think that Marvel has put out, it might be one of the, the best that they've put out, I, I, I think. think I, it was excellent. I think other than maybe Spider-Man No Way Home, it's definitely the strongest post-Endgame. Oh, yeah. This is just yep. on another level in it terms of storytelling and just emotion. Like, <sighs> real, real emotion. Like, a lot of people will kind of hand-wave superhero movies. It's just like, oh, that's just silly kid yep. stuff. But the yep. emotions in this are so real and so heavy. I think it's going to take people aback. Oh, definitely trigger warning. Yeah. If you're uh, you know, not a fan of watching animals be harmed, don't, yeah. just don't watch the movie. Yeah. Cuz that's about the the majority of it. Yeah, there's is, a there's a huge rough. chunk of it that is about uh, rocket raccoons. Yeah, you get all of Rocket's origin. backstory and his origin. It's awesome. And well, there'd been hints that he had been tortured. Mm -hmm. And you you tell, you don't see like tr like really really graphic torture, but there is enough that it is disturbing. And you oh, yeah. see his friends who are all, they're all part of this experiment by this character called the High Evolutionary, who's trying to create the perfect being. Yep. And so he's taking all these animals and experimenting with them and giving them intelligence. And so he Rocket has this whole crew of of little critters, and some of them are kind of disturbing looking. Oh, one is. A horrifying image. Yeah. You love the character, but yeah. it's a horrifying image it's this, to look at. It's this bunny with <sighs> yep. like spider legs Four. and it's got like a mouth like muzzle, like a metal muzzle, yeah, and like just... red eyes, and you're like, oh god, it's terrifying. Well, I'd had a nightmares, but it's <laughs> you know <laughs> But it's this cute little like, yeah. style, it's this cute little voice and they all name themselves, and it's like, well, I feel the floor, so my name yeah, is mine, Floor. Mine's floor. And I'm like, oh. And so, Teeths, yeah, there's this walrus, <laughs> and he's like, well, I've got the biggest teeth, so, so I'm going to be called Teeth. And you're just like, oh, oh, and you're like, nothing, nothing's good happening for these characters. And, and so it like, doesn't. So yeah. every time you see them, it's just like so heartbreaking, and uh it's a great movie. It's uh, a great the, movie. The, the, it, it was beautiful. I, I know I teared up quite a few times. I was. I know you did. Yeah, I'm an easy mark. I cry pretty easily, but I was like, my eyes were sore. <laughs> As I said, I was like, leaving the movie. Terrible sobbing. Yeah, just like, oh, God, it's too much. <laughs> um, my wife, Ashley, like, halfway through, she, like, turned to me, her eyes just, like, sobbing, like, I don't like this movie. Mm, mm. And it wasn't that she hated the movie, but it was just the emotional intensity, of yeah. especially that origin stuff. It definitely stuff with gets Rocket. pretty intense it with gets... Rocket. Yeah he, yeah, he goes through some stuff. Yeah. And you really get an understanding of why he was the way that he was, yeah. you know, especially why he's in so the angry. early Guardians, why he was so guarded and angry, yeah. and just you really get a taste of why. Yeah. And um, yeah, everyone's arc in this movie is awesome. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone gets a great art. Yeah. Every character. It's James Gunn's exit from Marvel. Yeah. Way done. Bring a yeah. piece of that and to the DC verse you're bringing, and oh, I'm, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I love what James Gunn does with superhero movies. He, and not just with Marvel, because he's done The Suicide Squad yep. and Peacemaker for DC. And those are just amazing. And what he does with storytelling and characters and, and humor, he really is not afraid to go for big emotions mm -hmm. in a way that a lot of other filmmakers, especially in genre stuff, kind of pull away from. Yeah. 
Like but he keeping goes it to for the action big. and the CGI, but he's he's giving you that plus. Yeah. Heart. Really deep storytelling in yeah. heart and yeah. Uh, and grounded I was, characters. Yeah. Very, which very is, grounded. Which is kind of crazy to think. Like, oh yeah, you got grounded characters in a, in a movie with a giant talking tree yeah. and a talking raccoon yep. and a talking dog. Uh, but there's emotion there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first one came out in 2014. So we've been with these characters for nine years. Yep. And we've really gotten to love them. And these films don't just feel like, oh, here's another adventure. Like, he's actually taken the time to build these characters, give them arcs. Yeah, and... take you through a big chunk of their life and what yeah. they're dealing with and how they overcome all of that. It, yeah, it's great. I loved all the Guardians were amazing. Yeah. This one was just the cherry on top. Yeah. So good. And it, it's crazy to say this, but it's been 15 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because the first Iron Man came out in May 2008. Mm. And in that time, we've had 32 movies. Mm-hmm. So they're averaging a little more than two movies a year. Yep. Like 2.2 2 yep. movies a Plus year. Plus all the shows. Plus all and, the yeah, shows. And all the other stuff. And I have to say, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies are top tier. They're like, oh, volume, hands down, volume very 2 top is tier. probably in my top three. I love volume two. Yeah, I, I, there's not one of the Guardians I don't like. And they're I think excellent. part of the reason why they are as good as they are is because it's the really the only trilogy of films because the MCU has like basically franchises within the franchise. Mm-hmm. It's the only trilogy that is written directed by one person. Yep. There's one singular voice making that film. Yep. And it and it shows because there's a continuity with these films. Oh yeah. There's a character, you know, through line with all of these films that is kind of missing with some of these other ones like the Captain America trilogy, which was directed, two of them were directed by the Russo brothers. But a lot of those other trilogies are also having to do work in the sense that they're setting up other films. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as, as great as Captain America Civil War is, that is a set that is setting up a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. And so it yep. kind of pulls away a little bit from the Captain America story. Mm-hmm. The Iron Man trilogy, same thing. Iron Man 2 was setting up stuff for the future too and so because those films are having to do so much other work for other movies and future movies it kind of takes away a little bit from the stories of those i could agree with that and the guardians trilogy is largely self-contained it has to acknowledge what happened in avengers infinity war and endgame yep but other than that it's not connected to any previous or past films it's just allowed to tell its own story they're allowed yeah yeah, they get their own little story arc. They yeah. come into all the uh, the bigger yeah. Marvel movies, of course, you know, and play their roles. But yeah, they have their own thing going off, right? Off, which off I in think, space, which is amazing. I think that's what a lot of people uh, post Endgame have really been trashing the MCU and oh, yeah. saying like, "Oh, it's it's all garbage. All of it's garbage now." I'm like, "Pipe, pipe, pump those brakes. It's not. It's not all garbage." But I do think part of the reason why people are saying that is that it's too much now. There's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of content, yeah. and there's too much focus on, well, this movie's connected to that TV show, and that TV show's connected to this movie, and if you don't watch that TV show, you won't understand you this no movie. You have no idea what's going on here. And I think a lot of people are kind of just checking out because of that. Yep, it's a lot of work to keep up yeah. with the Marvelverse these days. I'm out of touch with a lot of the shows. I haven't seen, I've seen my fair share. I mean, Loki is just yeah, Loki's awesome. great. Um, uh, but I think that's an issue. Like the Marvels movie that's coming out yep. in November, which is a sequel to Captain Marvel. It has Miss Marvel in it, mm-hmm. and then uh, Monica Rambeau, which was in, she was introduced in WandaVision. Yep. And Miss Marvel was introduced in the Miss Marvel series. Now to understand <laughs> this Marvels movie, yep. you'll have to watch. You'll have to have watched Captain Marvel. Yep. WandaVision. And Miss Marvel. Not everybody has Disney Plus, Mm-mm. so that movie this is, is going to make no it, sense it, it, to make, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, and it looks like a fun movie, but like it's it's starting to feel like homework for people. I think yeah. that's a fair assessment. Yeah, it is. It is like homework to go through everything and yeah. to get to get completely caught up. Is it takes months? Yeah, yeah. And if, you, <laughs> months if you're into time. it, like I'm into it. I'm yeah. watching all this stuff. We revisit but, it all the time, but there's there's a lot. 
There's yeah. so much content to, to yeah. get through. And so if you're just a casual viewer, if like you were just someone who liked Captain Marvel and you didn't watch anything else, you're going to be like, well, who are these new characters? I don't yep. know who these people are. Yep. I just wanted to see another Captain Marvel movie. So <laughs> I think that's why some people are kind of getting a little frustrated with Marvel. Yes, but that's what we signed up for at the beginning, I know. right? Is that not, that was the whole point to open up the Marvel verse. Yeah. And let's get into all these interconnecting stories and stuff. Right. But it, it, it is a lot. It's, yeah. It is a lot. I, I think they need to slow it down a little bit because for a while now, we've been getting two or three Marvel movies a year. Now we're getting two or three Marvel movies a year plus two or three TV series a year. Yep. I think what they need to do is maybe do one movie a year. Make it something big, make it something special, and then you have the TV series because then it's not so much There's so work. much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, we've already, what, reviewed two Marvels this year with yeah. more to go. Yeah. There's more yeah, coming there's, out. There's, Mar there's the Marvel. The Marvel's coming. Yep. And, uh, yeah. It's, and then... You know, the Secret Invasion series is coming in yep. the end of the month. Uh, season two of Loki's season, coming yeah. out soon. Yeah. Like, wow. it's, it's, yeah, there's it's all a lot kinds of, stuff. of good stuff. So, but I don't, and maybe it is just superhero fatigue, but like, I've seen so many people saying uh, Thor Love and Thunder is terrible. One, it's just the worst movie ever made. It was so fun. It's so fun. I loved that movie. It was so fun. Yeah, I loved it too. And, it makes me start feeling like I'm crazy because every, you know, and th you get this thing where people just start telling a narrative. Like they jump on the bandwagon of the narrative on yeah. the internet. Yeah. And so everybody says, oh, it's terrible. I've seen so many video think pieces where it's why this is not funny and why it's ruining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's like, you know, oh, and why is why it's ruining Thor? Thor is supposed to be a serious. Thor is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's always been like, the idea of Thor, the character, is ridiculous. <laughs> he is this guy who speaks like this. And, like, to play that seriously for more than one movie... It, you it's would hate him even worse. Yeah, yeah it's an absurd would, yeah. character. Yeah. Uh, I don't... I don't get... And maybe... I love Thor Ragnarok. It was probably... Oh, masterful. Masterful. Yeah, and that movie. one has a better balance of tone between comedy and serious. I will agree with that. Love Thunder... Love, uh, Thor Love and Thunder just goes all in on the silly. Yeah. And it's a Taika Waititi film. Both of those films are Taika. But that one, like, really feels like a Taika Waititi film. If oh, you know yes. his other films oh, yes. and his sense of humor. It, it, it's it. it. It's yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, did you see those uh, shorts? It was, like, the Teen Daryl shorts where it yep. was uh, Thor and his roommate in Australia. Yeah. That's what Thor Love and Thunder felt more like. Yeah. I think it felt more like and. I don't know why people are just like, oh no, you ruined it. It's too funny. It's too ser it's too goofy. I'm like, I'm fine with that. Like, why can't we have a goofy movie? He's the god of thunder. You can't, yeah. I mean, how serious are we taking these movies? And I think that's the <laughs> problem. Know, like, like some people It's are just, not real life. You yeah. Know, it's just fantasy and fun. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I I think that's what people forget is that these should be fun. And something like Guardians of the Galaxy is fun with, with also the emotion. Yeah. And it's a good ride. It's a good ride. Yeah. And you can watch all the Guardian movies without touching any of the other Marvels. Yeah. And be able to pick up on what's going on. Yeah. Like, this... Okay, the second one with Gamora going missing and, like, the new one there. Like, oh, oh not the second one. But, but, but yeah. Yeah. Avengers. And, but there's... Even this film yeah. finds a way of doing that where if you hadn't watched... And I don't know how you would have been watching right. Marvel they, movies. They, 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 they answer it for you. Right. And yeah. it's so funny because they're in an elevator and oh. it's... Just Peter Peter Quill, Star Lord, played by Chris Pratt, just being like, "So, uh, me and her, we used to be in love, but this isn't the real this her because her. she she died, she died and, yeah. and this is just she some died other on a magic alternative. mountain." And, yeah. <laughs> and it just like in one minute explains everything that you might have missed in oh. a way that's really funny, yeah. and it's it's doing exposition but doing it in a way that's smart and funny <laughs> instead of just having a giant information drop. Oh yeah, which is what so many movies do yeah. with exposition is all of a sudden you'll just have a character just be like, "Well, this, 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 and that," and there you go, and you're like, "Okay, well, thanks for that," but it's just usually it's just wasting time. Yeah. Uh, but with uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. They've always been really good with their soundtracks. Oh, fantastic. And it, it, this one, I think they missed, they missed the ball. 
Do you do? You think I that? do. The soundtrack, I think, was amazing. Yeah. I think the songs were misplaced in a lot of scenes. Okay. Where it wasn't, it just didn't feel connected to the scene. It just felt like a forced song because it's a good song to yep. put into the movie. Yeah, that's fair. It, I just, I, the soundtrack's phenomenal. As with all the other Guardians, it was just the placement of the songs in the scenes at some points yep. felt felt forced and it didn't really mesh with me. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I will say this. The first song mm. and the last song. Uh, the first song in the movie is uh, an acoustic version of Creep yes. by Radiohead. Oh, yes. And brilliant. That was That was that great. Was brilliant. Yeah. And what it does, and it does so well, is that it sets a tone and it sets a mood. As all, most of the songs do in The Guardians. Yes. Because the previous yep. two Guardians films opened up with a fun, upbeat song. Mm -hmm. The first one was uh, Come and Get Your Love. Mm -hmm. And then the second one was Mr. Blue Sky. And those were like upbeat, dancing. And the first one, it was Peter Quill dancing. And the second one, it was Baby Groot yep, dancing. Baby Groot. Here, so you know you're going to have a fun movie. This, having Creep. And it's dark just tone. Dark tone. And, just, it's, and it's an acoustic version. Yeah, so it's even it was, more yeah, melancholy. It was great. And he, he just follows Rocket around yeah. nowhere as he's going, you know, as the Guardians are living out their day. Yeah. Seeing where they're all at in and their lives right now. And he's kind of singing along. And it's a perfect song for you know, oh, yeah. the Guardians yes. as, a, as a whole because it's, you know, I'm a weirdo, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a loser. And that's, I mean, that was what the, there was the monologue in the first movie where it's like, we're a bunch of losers, yeah. meaning that we've lost things. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also, uh, you also see Peter drinking because he's still mourning Gamora. Oh, and yeah. it's like, so it just sets this tone. And then, bam, right, right after that, Adam Warlock shows up and just tears them apart. And man, so, you, I, yeah, he's not messing around. He comes in hot yeah. and tears them up. Yeah. <laughs> tears and them all there up. There are some jokes in that, but for like the first like 30 minutes, it's just like, whoa, right. this is an intense movie and this is an emotional movie and it doesn't hold back. No, it's definitely the darkest of the Guardians, yeah. but it, it's also probably one of the darkest period within the MCU. Uh, in just terms of like, yeah, 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 subject matter and just what the characters are dealing with, yeah, yeah. for sure, one yeah. of the darkest. Uh, but then, in terms of like a bookend, uh, the last song is "The Dog Days Are Over." Yep, by Florence and the Machines, and it's it's that upbeat dancing song, and it's everybody dancing, mm -hmm. and you've gone through this emotionally draining story, and then to have this, "The Dog Days Are Over." and have like, it is literally like, we went through this, the dog days are over, and mm -hmm. we have this triumphant moment. It's, those two songs, like just that tells a story arc. And I was like, okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, I'll clap give you on that, that. for sure, yeah. The first and the ending songs were masterful. Yeah. The one where they're landing on the, I, I can't remember the song, yeah. but they're landing on the living organism planet or whatever. Was it We Care A Lot, I think? Yeah, maybe? it was just, it just didn't mesh with me. Like, yeah. this is an odd placement it's for the song. It's either that or maybe it was This Is The Day. Like, I don't I don't, I remember. don't remember, but I'll have to watch it again to, to pinpoint this, this, yeah. the scenes where they didn't flow with me. But yeah, the creep, the opening one, I do remember being very... Yeah, it sets you up emotionally, yeah. like, right away. Like, I like, was already hmm. primed to be like, <laughs> I know this is going to be emotional. I'm like... How am I already crying? <laughs> like I'm five minutes into this movie and it's just rocket. Nothing's walk even happened yet. It's just rocket walking around listening to Radiohead. <laughs> yeah. Why am I upset? Yeah. 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 And I didn't know how much of Rocket's story was going to be driving this movie. Yeah. And it's all of it. Yeah. I mean, it's totally Rocket's movie. Um, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, and there's wow. even a, a, even a line. I don't even say what character it is. That says uh, it was always your story. It's always been your yeah. It's and you think your back story. and you're like, wow. I guess it has kinda, it been like kind of has been. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Definitely one of the biggest unanswered questions throughout the the, the trilogy. Yeah. And I was very satisfied at the ending. Like they yeah. answered everything you really want to know. All the characters are set up where you can. Yeah, you're, you're confident of what's happening like with them now. Drax, and, uh, Dave oh, Batista. What an like, awesome! He is awesome. given a story arc you didn't even know that you wanted. No, it but really, once it once it came out, you're like, of course, of course, because it pays off. And I don't want to, I won't spoil anything, but the whole reason 
we met Drax, and the whole reason he was going on a mission was that he lost his family. His he lost revenge. his wife yeah. and children. Yep. And he wanted that, Thanos. He wanted yeah, that's why he wanted Thanos. And, and, but that gets paid off. Yep. And it goes back in such a beautiful way that oh, you yeah. didn't even beautiful know character that you would see coming. Arc for him. Yeah. Yeah. I it was awesome. And he's done interviews where he can't he would never come back as yeah, Drax. He's made because it because clear where he, they left it, he's satisfied as an actor, like, nah, I can't touch that. Yeah, he's also and said I agree. that he doesn't want Drax to be his legacy, which I, I think that I guess I understand that. He's like, oh, I don't want to be the, the guy with the makeup and the muscles to be my legacy. But it's a great character, and he plays it so well. Yep. But he's also proved that he can be a very good, serious actor. Oh, yeah. In movies like yeah. Blade Runner 2049 yep. and in Glass Onion. Yeah, Glass he's, Onion was fantastic. Yeah, yep. and he is a serious actor. Knock, on, knock at the cabin. Yeah. Didn't particularly love the movie. But he's very good in it. Yeah. Like, very serious and complicated character he gets to play. I really yeah. enjoyed that one. So. Yeah. So, I get it. He wants to be seen as a serious actor. So, he's distancing himself. Also, yeah. there's so much makeup. He's in his 50s now. Oh, it's got to be torture. Yeah. It's got to be torture. How long do you think he's got to sit there every yeah, day to get, to get suited yeah. up? Eight Absolutely. hours, something like that. Like, mm. uh, But if this it truly is his swan song, and it seems like it is, he has well a story done. arc. Yeah, like, beautifully, beautifully done. Yeah. Fantastic. Love Drax. Loved where he is. Don't don't come back as him. I'm fine. Yeah. That's cool. And there is a cool moment with Groot. Um, oh, watch one. There's so many well, good Groot, okay. Groot stuff Well, what I mean movie. is uh, in terms of him speaking. Oh, yes. And oh, yeah. I, I had this theory, and it was confirmed by James Gunn. Um, Groot actually says something more than I am Groot. And... It was previously established in an earlier scene, Gamora this whole time, because it's new Gamora, didn't understand him. And then she finally does. And I was like, oh, okay, so if you spend enough time with Groot, you magically start to understand him. Mm. So when he says something and we understand it, that's us having spent enough time with Groot oh, that we understand that him. you understand it? That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. And that's what James Gunn said. He's like, that's, that's, so that's what, that's what that yeah. was at the end there. Yeah. And well, I, I like, like that. and I was like, oh, that, goosebumps. yeah, I was that like, was that, good. that's good storytelling. That's pretty good storytelling. That's bad. I don't want to spoil what he says, but like, when you realize that was the intention and what he says, you're just like, oh, yeah, that's kind of like, oh, oh, right in the feels. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the end group, man. Yeah. I want to see more of that, dude, because you every Guardian movie, you get, you know, baby Groot. Right. Um, or the original Groot, baby yeah. Groot, then you yeah. get a little teenage punk Groot. Now yeah. you got a an adult Groot. Yeah. And he's awesome. Yeah. He is beefy and he is yeah. not to be messed at one, with. At one point, <laughs> they're like, go into kaiju mode. And he just yeah, like yeah, grows just <laughs> Monster. But the end, when yeah. when you see the uh, the new Guardians kind yeah. of take off in your post credit scene. Yeah. Well, he takes another transformation. Yeah, he does. He is something like, whoa, yeah. what? Let's see that and dude. James Gunn has said that he's done. He's not going to do any more uh, any more Guardians yep. movies. Uh, but th you're right. There is a new lineup of Guardians characters. I'm not going to say who it is. Yep, not gonna... There's some some characters that are staying. Some that are new to the crew. Mm -hmm. And it's very likely that we could have an adventure with that new crew, or maybe we won't. I don't know. It does say at the end during the credits that Star Lord will will return. Um, I don't know what in capacity. Maybe yeah. Avengers movie. Maybe he'll be teamed up with somebody else. He's on Earth now, so who yeah, knows? I don't want to. Yeah, we haven't spoiled much of this no. movie. I'm proud of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot that we could have spoiled, uh, but uh, there is one character well. that we haven't really gotten into that was fully introduced in the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which you haven't watched, people. It is spectacular. It's fantastic. And it does, it isn't essential to understanding this movie, but it does kind of set up things a little bit that Nowhere, which is like this celestial head that's floating in space, is now their base. That was yep. set up in the holiday special. Yep. But Cosmo, the, uh, the Russian space dog who is telekinetic and can yep. speak, uh, was introduced, I believe, in the first Guardians in like a post credit scene, but now is actually part of the team. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and uh, what a great and what there's a great just this Craglin leaf Craglin who yeah. is uh was sort of uh 
He was Yondu's, Yondu's right, hand, right, hand right hand man. man yeah. Now he's kind of part of the crew too. Yeah. He ha- he and Cosmo have this running gag where he called Cosmo a bad dog. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> and it's Hilarious. Like, don't. don't Take it back. I am not a bad dog. dog. You know I'm not a bad dog. No, I'm not taking it back. You're a bad dog. Uh, Through the whole movie, it's hilarious. And then then even that finally gets paid off. Yeah, it does. It's so spectacular. He gets quite an awesome arc as well in this movie. You know, obviously at the end, you you know, he took the fin. He took Yondu's fin and the the arrow. And the arrow, yeah. So this one touches on... uh, him learning how to use it and master yeah. this thing. And yeah. it, it's, there's a great payoff on that as well. Yeah. So you got to check that out because that was a great arc he's given. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even these minor characters, like Craglin, who was a character that was a, a fun character that we liked from Volume 2, even he gets beefed up. He and, does. And yeah. given more to do. Absolutely. And, uh, I will say maybe, and there is some payoff with the, the new Gamora and... Star Lord, uh, and that arc is interesting, and you can tell that uh, Zoe Zeldana is enjoying having something different to play because she's oh like, she's, she's so totally angry. different. Yeah, this is a great. She played yeah. a great a great one in this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the one that doesn't really get any growth that much is is Nebula, uh, but uh, Karen Gillian is great in the role. And I think her arc would just be that that she's solidified her family and home. Yeah. Y- y- yeah. You know, especially at the end because, you know, she's one of the new guardians. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it she, really she felt already, like she found her place in the world and yeah. her purpose. I think what, because we kind of, she kind of already went through her arc of yeah. going from being an adversary to being part of the team. And so mm-hmm. what we get to see is just her being part of the team. Yeah. Yeah, and, her settling into that role and yeah, and, and also that she's learned self control because in that scene in, in the <laughs> elevator, you could tell like past past Nebula would have just I've been like never, shut up, just I've shut never up. Never noticed how black your eyes are. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Uh, uh. So there, even though we were saying this is a dark and heavy, there is some really great. Oh yeah, there's stuff. some really good belly laughs. There's the first uh, uh, the great first, action sequences. The first f bomb in the MCU. Yep. Yep. Uh, which uh, which is great. Yep. Um, the great. clip is out there if you don't if you want to just see. Fantastically the clip. placed. Yep. And I did read uh, something that was said that uh, James Gunn was talking with Kevin Feige and uh, and uh, there was originally the the Russo brothers were going to have an f bomb in either Endgame or Infinity War, but they decided. Not to do that because they didn't want that to be part of their legacy. And James Gunn was like, "I'm fine with I'll that. Take be- that. I'll yeah, take I'll that. I'll take that. That makes it, you. Are you trying? PG thirteen. I get one. I get one. It's like, <laughs> so. are you telling me this to try to dissuade me? Because really, this is just making me want to do it more. <laughs> I'm I'm pouring through lines trying to fit that in yeah. right now. Yeah. So, so it all and it also feels like it's kind of teasing up Deadpool. It's like, hey, you got your first get one. Ready. You're gonna get just way more. Get ready. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. That's gonna be so. Something. I don't know. I think this is a great step for the MCU because they yes, were having movie. some struggles a little bit at the box, which I know is crazy to say, but like Ant Man uh, and the Wasp: Quantum Mania did not really do that well at the box office. No, nope, it didn't. Great uh, movie. Yeah, well, I enjoyed no, it. No, but well, people hate that one too. Yeah, well, God. I, and I, I don't. I I can understand maybe because that is sort of like kind of standard fare Marvel, where it's not really trying anything new as long as they keep it's doing a setup stuff, yes yeah. it's a setup movie which is but now but now yeah that's a whole yeah. mess and a half with that yeah we won't get into yeah, that no, necessarily no, we don't have time for um that. yeah so we gotta wrap this up so yeah. uh i know you're gonna be going away for a little bit next month so we'll but we'll get we'll get together we're definitely, absolutely definitely gonna do the flash oh, maybe we'll do I a little never super been so excited for a dc movie <laughs> As much as the Flash, I'm just excited for Michael Keaton back as Batman. That, it's the only reason I want to see this so badly. Is like, oh yeah, but please. we can do a superhero double feature because there's also the next uh, animated Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Ooh, yes. Across the Universe. So probably come back in a month and we'll uh, do those back to back. Yeah, sounds fun. I can't yeah. wait. All right, so uh, come you, back and get yeah. lost in movies again. <laughs>